I'm stuck with wee bit of dilemma because should I call this phone a six year old phone because I bought it in 2014 or a seven-year-old phone because it was launched back in 2013. That was 2013, April. I was relentlessly waiting for the launch event on YouTube on my miserably slow 512 kpbs of broadband connection. That phone got me swinging. The launch of Galaxy S4. The Galaxy S4 was launched back in 2013 with 2 gigabytes of RAM or 16 or 32 gigabytes of internal storage and a micro SD card to expand it to later. It came with a 13 megapixel camera with a flash running on Samsung's own 5410 Exynos Octa, which was a 28 nanometer chipset back then. The Galaxy S4 was one of the early adopters of Octa-core chipsets. It was one of the early phones to adopt LTE. And it came with a ton of features, which some people call gimmicks. It came with a feature called AirView, where you could lift the calls without uh, touching the phone, just by simply waving your hand over the sensor. That's too futuristic for 2013, I must say. And the smart scroll, so that you did not really have to use your thumb to scroll over the web feeds, or simply you can use your eyes or tilt the device to scroll the web pages. Again, a nice touch. Now this phone came with a 1920 by 1080 full HD display, resolution of 441 pixels per inch, which was sensational. This was the time where the Chinese players were not in the market and the Apple fanboys were talking about drop tests. And there is a feature called Smart Pause. What that does is when you're watching a video, and if someone calls you, when you take your eyes away from the phone, the front camera detects your eyes and pauses the video automatically for you. <laughs> How futuristic is that? And people who mocked the feature back then as a gimmick, and if one company in the tech world which invents it after a couple of years say it's revolutionary, go nuts and buy it. I'm not saying anything. I'll leave it up to you. Now this phone also came up with an application from Samsung called Group Play. What it does is basically let you host a network of phones to, to be connected to the Group Play where you can simultaneously share content between that sort of your private network. And you can also play music from that host phone and all the speakers of the phones connected to that network would play the song 
simultaneously. Sort of a great experience for a campfire or an outing thing where you really don't have to carry that big bulky speakers. I wish Samsung brings this feature back again in the next series of Note or Samsung Galaxy S series. Now this phone also sported an IR blaster on the top beside the headphone jack so that you can control appliances in your home like television or air conditioner or any of the smart appliances which worked with the IR technology. And that was fun back then. After the launch at New York City, the consumers, the media and the tech industry went mad about this phone. They have hit 20 million numbers in sales in just two months, 40 million in just six months and they eventually faded out with 80 million and still to this date, this phone, the very Galaxy S4, holds the crown for the most sold Android phone on this planet. The competition is nowhere near. Even the competition is its predecessor, the Galaxy S3, which was sold in 70 million in number. That's how the popular this phone was. Despite all of those features, it is not groundbreaking because of, I think, three major factors. First and primary thing is the heating. Heating is horrible on this device. It's like, uh, carrying a mini global warming in your pocket. Most volcanoes felt like cold freezers when compared to this phone on a high run. And also the body is built from plastic which made it very very light in hands. Literally very light. I think this is one of the lightest phones ever built. But it did not feel that premium enough to hold and, and spend thousands of rupees on this on a flagship device while the other manufacturers are actually using aluminum or glass back then. I think this is one of the phone's biggest drawbacks. And regardless to say, it also came with a heavy skin of TouchWiz, which made it very, very laggy to use. And, and I think most of the people would actually complain about TouchWiz back then. And thanks to one UI later on, now it is fluid smooth, but back in the day, it was very, 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 very lagging, very, very heavy, and it's not so intuitive to use. Apart from these things, this is a phone which, which is groundbreaking, not because of its perfections, but because of its imperfections, it opened new doors for the smartphone manufacturers to explore and sort of calculate what's needed and what's not needed on smartphones. Today, here we are. This is an important phone. If flagship smartphones are like supercars, then the Galaxy S4 is the Lamborghini Countach of them. You had supercars before Countach, and you have supercars after Countach. Similarly, you have flagships before Galaxy S4, and you have flagships after Galaxy S4. But this is a crucial milestone in the history 